Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to All Farms Work. It's time for my long-awaited review video of the JCB Teleskid 3TS 8T. We've had this unit on the farm for a little over a month now, and I've used it for pretty much every single task that I could possibly think to use it for. In this video, I'm just going to walk you guys around the machine, talk about some things that I really like about it, others that I think could be improved upon, and just my overall thoughts on the unit. So without further ado, let's get started. First and foremost, let's talk about the tracks. I've operated track machines in the past, but this was my first opportunity to heavily use a track machine for our everyday tasks around the farm. The benefits or perks to having a track unit were pretty blatantly obvious at first. So the biggest perk that I would have to say would be the stability of a unit with tracks. Now these JCBs do come in a wheeled form as well, but the stability of the tracks is just such a big plus that I really wouldn't trade it, trade it for wheels on a teleskid. And the reason being is because with that telescoping boom out the front, which is another plus, big plus, I'll get to, back to in a bit. Um, with the telescoping boom, it really helps to have a lot more stability to keep you from falling forward. And I've hauled full-size trees around with this thing, going downhill, up in the air, and I never managed to tip it forward or feel light on the front end. I'm not saying that these units aren't invincible to tipping forward, I'm just saying that having a track unit really, really helps. Another big perk to having tracks is the traction. Uh, compared to a wheeled machine, the tracks perform very well in certain conditions over a wheeled unit. So those are the big perks to having a track machine as well. Uh, when you're driving straight across grass, it is a lot better to have a track machine over wheels. Probably the thing that's grown on me the most over the last month has to be the single boom design. And the reason being visibility. After hopping in this unit and using it for several hours, uh, it really started to grow on me just because you have so much more visibility in front of you, to the left of you, and behind you that you really don't want to go back to the double booms. And um, I will admit that on this side of the unit, it is a little bit more difficult to see just because there is so much more boom there. And that is actually a good thing because there's so much more steel put into this thing to reinforce it um, that... I really can't see how I would bend this unit or do anything that would damage it. Uh, I've used it for a lot of different things over the last month that have tweaked and torqued it every which way and I really can't see how I would uh, damage it. And anybody can probably say that if you really wanted to destroy one of these things, single boom or double boom, you could do it. Um, and I've seen it happen with the double booms and I am sure that it does happen with these as well. But I really think that with all of the reinforcements that's going on here, uh, I don't really see how it would be any less different than a double boom design. Since we're on this side of the unit, we might as well talk about the telescoping boom, which is easily the biggest selling point of this unit to me. Uh, we've used this thing for so much over the last month and being able to reach out just a little bit farther is always helpful, especially for things like down in the barnyard where it was pretty, pretty muddy and it got pretty slick even for the tracked uh, teleskid. So having the telescopic forks on there, uh, we were able to extend them out and pick up the bale feeder and then drop them down on top of the bales. And uh, that's where that's really come in handy, but the, probably the biggest thing where the telescoping boom was the nicest would have to be when I was moving trees. With the Verning Rock Bucket, you could just grab the trees with the grapple and uh, just latch onto them, pick them up, drive over to the pile, extend the tree out over the pile and just drop them. If you've watched any of my previous videos, I have said that you really don't realize how often when you're in a regular skid loader, just how often you think, man, if only this boom would extend. And that is where the JCB Teleskid really, really shines. Another thing that has really grown on me in the last month has to be the hand controls. Uh, I'm typically used to hand and foot controls. However, after using ISO controls for the last month, I really prefer them. Uh, I feel like you have a little bit more uh, flexibility with it, I guess you could say. Uh, you're not working your whole body. Everything is just in the wrists, and it's, to me, a lot easier. Now, this particular unit can switch between ISO controls and H pattern, and ISO is where the uh, boom and the tracks or the uh, transmission are separated, so one for each hand. I think that it allows you to be a lot more focused on what you're doing. Let me show you guys the difference in the pin and bushing sizes between the JCB and then the Bobcat. So there is our JCB pin and bushing. And uh, 
they are pretty freaking thick as you can see there now let's come over here and compare the pin size on the bobcat much smaller now that you guys have heard the big pluses of the jcb teleskid i'm going to talk about just a few things that i would change on the unit or things that i think could be improved upon if i could change anything about the teleskid it would probably be to add in a window on this side of the cab. The reason being is because when you're standing over here or when you have somebody standing over here talking to you and you have the window open on the far side, it is rather hard to hear them. Now I can understand why they wouldn't want to add a window on this side because I could really see some people sticking their arms or heads out and uh, having the boom come down on top of them, which is understandable for why they wouldn't put a window on, on, the, on this side. Uh, but that would be a nice feature to have because it is a little bit difficult to hear on the other side. Something that I would probably change on the JCB if I had purchased it would probably be the lights on the front end. Uh, I don't feel that they are super, super bright, uh, no less bright than our Bobcats. However, I think with a newer unit like this, they should at least be LEDs, which is pretty good because JCB chose a simple design as far as their lighting goes. And uh, you can swap those out really no problem at all. There's just a bolt on top and those should drop right out. So you can upgrade them if need be. Um, that is something that I would definitely do uh, if I were to purchase it, both front and back. Um, and something like that, I actually prefer because it's modular. You can take them off and change them. Whereas with the Bobcat, you're pretty much stuck with a single design. Uh, I'm not totally sure. There are probably different uh, lighting kits that you can have for these things but there's probably not as big of a selection as you can with these because these are pretty much universal. Now that you guys have heard the positives of having tracks, now it's time to talk about the downsides and there are downsides of having a tracked machine. While you may not be able to pop a track like you can a tire, there are a few things to keep in mind when you're considering a purchase of a skid loader that either has wheels or tracks. JCB does make the teleskids in both wheeled and tracked models. However, in the teleskids case, I would really prefer to have a tracked model because of the stability. And I've talked about the positives of having stability, especially with the telescoping boom. So in that case, I really would prefer to have a tracked machine. But if you're considering a smaller unit that doesn't have quite as much lift capacity, um, I would, in my case, I would really prefer wheels just because of the maintenance aspect of having to clean the, the tracks out every time you use them, um, as well as the added cost of having tracks, because tracks are pretty expensive. And um, really how they perform really depends on your conditions. There are, I will admit, there are several conditions where a, a wheeled loader will perform better than a tracked, um, such as on concrete. Uh, I noticed that on concrete that was wet, uh, the teleskid actually did slip and slide around quite a bit. However, uh, on dirt, it, it just completely blew the wheeled machine out of the water. Um, it had a lot better flotation. Uh, but earlier today, um, when I started this day off, this track unit was completely cleaned. It was spotless. Travis cleaned it, and uh, we had to move the steer stuffer down the steer lot, which you may not be able to see now, but there's a bunch of dirt that's stuck up underneath. Um, and I had to drive through some mud to get out to it. And um, that brought a bunch of dirt up over it. And that's just something to consider. Uh, if you're in mud conditions a lot, um, especially in colder regions, you may consider going the wheeled uh, aspect just because in the winter, I could see it being fairly difficult to clean these out, um, especially when they do, they do gather mud. And um, it's important to keep them clean. And as long as you take the time to clean them out at the end of every day, it's really not much of an issue. It just takes time. So probably my one last thing that I want to mention that I would change, um, and this isn't a big deal, is just the hydraulic hoses on the back. Um, they are pretty exposed, but I'm looking at you, John Deere. Um, some other skid loader models are notoriously bad for that, in my opinion. Um, that's one thing that I've always kind of kept an eye on is just how uh, exposed the hydraulic lines are in the back. And I've noticed that John Deere is pretty bad for that. Um, not on just one side of the booms either, like on both sides, they stick out pretty far. To me, it seems like they would be pretty easy to catch on something. Um, but I here on the JCB, at least they're up high enough where you're not gonna catch something. They aren't real far down. 
Um, but you never know. And maybe even just like a plate or something like on like that on the back, just to help protect them, um, would be something else that I would change on this unit. But again, not nearly a deal breaker. Overall, my feelings of the JCB Teleskit are extremely positive. It performed well beyond my wildest expectations, and I was able to accomplish way more this last month than I would have been able to with our Bobcat. With that, I just want to briefly thank JCB for sending the Teleskit down to us to use for the last month. So, with that, uh, that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. With that, thanks for watching. Be able to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. All How Farms Work. And with that, I'll see you next time. <music>